All right, so I'm not quite an alum yet. I will be in about three weeks, so. Yes. So excited. Um, like you said, my name's Kim Ford. It's also up here if you forget. <laughs> Big letters. Um, and actually, my poetry name or performance name is Infinity. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. Originally, it started as Infinity. Um, and what that meant was being forever dedicated to the fight and uh, struggle for justice. And it eventually kind of evolved um, over the years to infinity. I wanted something to represent um, validity in voice. So that's where the V comes from. I know it rhymes with divinity, but it's not for that. It's actually because it, it's a reminder to me to share my own personal voice and then hopefully to others to share theirs. And so um, with that being said, um, that's actually kind of why I wrote the piece that I did now. It's just about my own personal kind of experiences about seeing health disparities and overall um, sometimes wealth being a, a way that limits people to having access to certain things. And so um, it doesn't really have a name, but I'm going to share this first piece with you and then I'll share a second one. Look into my eyes and tell me what you see. Do you see a dollar sign or a human wanting to be free? The system of green. No choice to live in between seems to run lives and at the same time ruin them. Help some and at the same time hurt others in a better world is what I thought we wanted for our future children, our future mothers. I want to live in systems of barter and trade, want to learn how to work without incentive of getting paid, want to work towards community care, but first, I need true desire of people in order to get there. So I plan on looking for a job beyond the corporations, because they are the ones that can lose workers without negotiation. I want a different situation. I want accessibility to healthy organic food. I want to be in a culture not based on what you can consume. Don't want to see the clouds in the sky that become the symbol of doom. I want pollution to not discriminate. I want better health rates. I don't want socioeconomic status to be in control of your fate. I want oppression to wait. We need these conversations to help communities gain. Those that are dying quicker need tools to self-sustain. Please hear the cries. There's a story behind the pain. Because some see the color green and not, are not reminded of peace, not reminded of meditation upon grass and spirituality. Some see the color green and can't think. Focus turn to trying to breathe. Look into my eyes and tell me what you see. Do you see a dollar sign or a human wanting to be free? Peace. So in that piece, I talk about health disparities, pretty much. And um, personally, I've really experienced that in my life. Um, and I usually do most pieces. It, uh, around identity, uh, and I talk a lot about maybe being mixed ethnicity, so I identify as Chinese and Puerto Rican. Um, so yeah, quite a mix, maybe any Boricuas, Chinese, who are proud, represented. Uh, yeah, so, um, <laughs> yeah, I do a lot of pieces around that, but um, around my experiences of being multi-ethnic also has experiences of whole, having um, multi socioeconomic statuses, which is really an interesting concept, but um, I just kind of want to explain that a little bit. So for me, what I've seen in my life is on my Puerto Rican side um, is ha being in lower socioeconomic status, and on my mom's side, she's an uh, immigrant from China, she has um, a little, like a middle class income. And so what I've seen with that, um, it's really interesting actually. So I grew up here in Fort Collins. Um, and my mom works at the Poudre Valley Hospital, but she works as a registered nurse. And so she has that middle class income that kind of, um, she's surrounded by conversations around health, around um, sustainability, things like that. You know, we have organic uh, soap, we have organic 
lettuce, we have organic dog food, so it's pretty versatile. Like we have all these organic things, right? Um, and then I go to my grandmother's house, and my grandmother too works in the Poudre Valley Hospital, right? But she works as a housekeeper. I think they have a new term for it. It's like environmental specialist or something, which is kind of ironic because the conversations that she's around isn't really about the environment. You know, my grandma lives more so paycheck to paycheck, and um, the conversations around health are limited. So. Um, I go over to her house and, you know, my grandma's like borderline diabetes and I see that health disparity and it's so real in my life and so um, it's very personal and um, I just wanted, that's like really where my heart goes into this. So um, the reason why I mention that is I think it's just essential to include everyone in the conversation around health, around sustainability, um, a lot of times polluted areas. The highest polluted area in Denver, or that in Colorado, is in the Lear Swansea neighborhood. Um, and there's a place actually I'm going to intern next, uh, or this upcoming summer, it's called the Grow House, which is a great thing to look into if you've heard of it. Um, but it's called the Grow House, and so I'm going to do a little, I'm going to be a co-facilitator for the program, but they really look at the culture of the community and how to really integrate people that are living in that environment. And talking about, you know, having bilingual education because um, a lot of the people that are living in that, that specific area are um, Spanish speaking. So I think it's just important to remember those things. DJ Kabom out of Denver, he really incorporates the idea of sustainability. He has um, a slogan, going green, going bling. Or, Living green, going bling, and it incorporates uh, urban, um, the urban environment and culture into that that conversation. Um, so, with that being said, I'm going to share one more piece just about my multi-ethnic experience. It's kind of lighthearted, um, and it just kind of goes into like who I am. And um, thank you. <laughs> I am the Chinese woman with curly hair, the Puerto Rican with normal hair, the Puerto Rican with a weird accent. I am the American that people wonder where I'm from. I am the non-American citizen, the Chinese woman with too dark of a tan, the light-skinned Puerto Rican, the Chinese woman with a double eyelid, the Puerto Rican with slanted eyes. I am the Chinese woman that needs to tighten up her frame, the Boricua with curves that has papi say, Okay. <laughs> I make arroz con tofu, listening to bachata. You see, my feet seem to stumble when I listen to salsa, and my hips begin to sway when I hear some Marvin Gaye. My heart feels at ease listening to Sade. I am from poverty and from middle class, from immigration papers to traveling to La Isla without need of a passport. I am the good, I'm the the cousin that went to college and has a white vocabulary. The cousin that isn't studying to be an engineer or a doctor. I'm the bad Chinese daughter that doesn't know how to spell Shanghainese, more or less speak it, that can't speak to Naboo, pero puedo hablar un poco con mi abuela de mi otro lado. That needs to call my cousin and say, prima, if I say puedo hablar un poco con mi abuela de mi otro lado, does it mean I can speak a little with my grandmother on my other side? I'm the good Puerto Rican for seeing the island, but on the island, I'm a bad Puerto Rican for assimilating to the culture that my grandmother came to. You see, I'm not done with this piece. Keep adding lines daily every time someone misunderstands why I listen to the music that I do when someone asks me where I'm from and my fire it fuels. It isn't always easy living life in these shoes, being the rope in a tug of war game, and whose side will I choose? But I won't choose one prideful of being from the two. I am the Chino Rican, Boricuanese, Chinequa, call me what you please, and I will continue to define what being Chinese and Puerto Rican means to me. Peace.